Welcome to this week's YouTube where we'd like to wish everybody a great holiday season and what better way to celebrate the holidays than to watch the wolves in the winter wonderland that we call Minnesota. I'd like to say how grateful again we are to the pup care staff, to the wolf care staff, to the Ely Vet Clinic, to the U of M, all of the people that have helped us get Luna to this point. We're monitoring her as the winter progresses and the temperatures get cold. She does have a little bit of a limp. Uh, we're treating her with Adequin, which uh, again is a injectable, um, similar to glucosamine, um, which has really good results for her. Uh, we're watching how active she is. We're watching how she feeds, how she interacts, and, and you know, really trying to judge uh, what's the next step in her care. And she is an active little pup. And as a matter of fact, you ask a uh, Aiden and Danelli, they might say she's a pesky little pup. Um, that's all good indication that she's, you know, feeling good. Uh, we, you know, it's hard with wolves to uh, monitor pain response. They don't, you know, um, show pain like a dog. They are very hardy animals. So we're constantly watching that. And these videos help us process and really kind of observe. In addition to uh, providing YouTube, uh, that provides us some good indication of how things are going. And this is Aiden here, a uh, nice little snowfall coming down. Does a little bit of a rub up against the shoulder of Luna. I don't know uh, if he was looking for her to follow him, but there's a beaver in the back side of the rocks, and Denali had put it there. So it's a little bit of a confrontation that you heard. I didn't get to see it, but um, Denali came out the winner of that, actually, and uh, took uh, the beaver and moved it to another part of the exhibit. Not a concern for Aiden. Aiden, again, is so relaxed, and he's uh, his uh, discoid lupus is almost gone. Uh, again, probably, again, this calmer behavior, his higher-ranking status makes, you know, less stress on the immune system, we assume, and that's an autoimmune disorder. But he is such a great pack leader, uh, letting these pups really uh, just socially engage, you know, kind of chewing on them. He's giving them a little bit of a four-leg stab and then hugging them a little bit and, you know, putting some limits on them, but not putting a lot of limits on them. So that's why we end up seeing this next clip, which is a little obnoxious puppy behavior. That's Bolts. Uh, again, he had just been, you know, rolling on top of or climbing on top of Aiden when he was down, so he figured he could take it one step farther and do a ride-up. And, of course, Aiden's wagging his tail and not taking it too seriously. Bolts does a chin rest and he's trying to mount and, you know, do all these kind of climbing social rank behaviors and Aiden's just letting him do it. You know, again, there are times when Aiden puts an end to it and he's a lot more serious, but, you know, being a pack leader doesn't mean that you're always domineering over them. There's a lot of difference between dominance and domineering. A pack leader is respected. A pack leader socially engages and those are the traits that Aiden's displaying. It's the traits that Shadow displayed and what made Shadow such a great pack leader for eight years is that the pups respected him and they bonded with him. And that's really how Aiden's running this pack, uh, very similar to Shadow. And again, we do see the time when Aiden says enough is enough and he can hard muzzle bite these pups and they do listen. Well, Bolts does, um, not necessarily Luna. But uh, anyways, so that's a... The exhibit pack, and again, Aiden, very watchful. And there isn't a thing that goes on in that wolf yard without Aiden knowing about it. He presents a, a good vantage point here on top of the slate den to listen, to watch. You can see his ears like parabolic mic. It's just kind of going back and forth, taking in the action. And then over in Grizzer's area, Grizzer, we had just cleaned the waters, and so Grizzer decided to take that opportunity to empty the waters, pawing them out. Um, we did three pails of water before we finally had Grizzer stop playing in the water bowl. Um, so that means a little bit of wet feet. And when this was filmed, it was actually right about uh, freezing on Fahrenheit, so about 32 degrees. And so it was still a little, little damp. Um, not like we have to worry about ice balls in that temperature. But I want to comment a little bit. A lot of people feel sorry for Grizzer because he's alone. And just want to reiterate, um, Grizzer being alone is the best option for Grizzer and for the other adult wolves. Grizzer is extremely aggressive towards Malik, and while he's mild-mannered and calm and rolling over and greeting wolf care staff, we watch him with a T2 tail in a lunge attack when he sees Malik doing anything on the other side of the exhibit. So it's for Malik's best interest and for Grizzer, you know, mild-mannered by 
wolf care staff terms, but he is not play well with other adult wolves. And so this is the best option that we have for him. We think Shadow could handle him. We think Shadow could maintain him. But we don't want to break up Shadow Malika's brothers. Um, and that would just mean Malik was alone. And at this point, Grizzer is the best suited for that. And he is very relaxed. You know, granted, he's got the Raven issue to deal with. Uh, but um, he does he does better than anybody as far as being alone. And then over in retirement, again, a little bit. Shadow's feeling better. And we always know that because Shadow's guarding things and there happened to be a beaver on top of the den. And he's going to um, kick Malik off the den. I actually had fresh straw too, so he's got a lot to possess up there. And he's going to do the chin rest. It's interesting how Bolts was uh, doing a chin rest over on the other side and Shadow's doing a chin rest over here. And Malik, actually you can tell things have calmed down. Malik's accepting it. You know, it's like, okay, you're back. You're back to being the leader of us too. And... Malik's um, not as anxious about it. He does get a little nervous, though, when Shadow gets a little bit invasion of his privacy. And uh, Shadow up on top of the den is going to, again, reiterate that that's his beaver carcass on the den. And then he goes a little bit farther and does an anal scent gland sniff. And eh, that's not something that Malik's all that interested in, is having his uh, credentials checked. Uh, so we'll see uh, Malik's ears go back into a little bit more of a posture that's uh, intimidating and then he's going to maybe try to whirl around a little bit and uh, but that clearly for us means that the way Malik's acting that uh, he accepts that Shadow's back into uh, feeling good and feeling like a pack leader and doing what he needs to do to uh, show some status. So that's it uh, for this week's YouTube. Again, thanks for watching and we are um, so grateful uh, for people who are concerned about our ambassador wolves as much as we are and we'll see you uh, next week we should be able to get one in before the new year have a good day